One of the first things you learn in programming, and what is actually really important in programming and in game making, is to somehow print out text onto the screen. And in Game Maker, you do that with a function called draw. I've created an object here called object draw, and anything you do that uses draw functions needs to go in the draw event. It can't go anywhere else, won't work. So I'm going to be teaching drawing text to the screen. And here are all the major functions you'll need to understand for drawing text. The simplest function is draw text. This needs three arguments down here, the X position, the Y position, and the string. Now if you remember, string is just a series of letters or words that can be printed out. It's not code, it's just actually words, like you would put into a Word document. So for the X and Y, I've chosen the current X and Y coordinate of this object. To show you what that is, just open up my room, it's right there. So it's sitting at 320 and 256. That'll be the anchor point from which my text will be drawn. Whenever you draw text, the string has to be within double quotes or single quotes, and they have to match, like so. Just depends on which part of the world you're from and which you are used to, single or double quotes. Both are available. Now here I've just written, this is some text. Let's make that grammatically correct and put in a period. And I'll show you what this looks like when it prints it out to the screen. There it is. It's really ugly, but it does say this is some text. Now the reason it's ugly is because it's going off of all of the Game Maker defaults. The default color for the text is black. The default alpha is 100%. It's full alpha and you know it's fully opaque. The default font is Arial and the default points for the font is 12. It's 12 point Arial font. So it looks really ugly and it started right here. The anchor point is at the top left and then it just printed out the text. So let's not make it ugly. Let's make it something better. So we'll keep this line as is. But let's take a look at this script I've prepared and turn off the comment. Now we've got a whole bunch of things we can do for setting. This is draw set. And I'm going to draw set the alpha now the default is 1, but let's type it in anyway. So draw set alpha needs the alpha, and that's anywhere between 0 and 1, so you can have 0 0.5, that's half. Remember, this is like percentages, right? So that's 50% of the opacity. But let's go full opacity. Now we can set the color to any value. At this time, I'd like to point out something. Game Maker, made by YoYo -Yo Games, is a Scottish company. Therefore, it's part of Britain and it uses English in Europe. So the U is present in color. You don't have to use the U. For instance, if you're American and you don't use U in words like this, you don't have to and the function will still work. However, you won't be able to see the help in the info pane down here. You actually have to use, there we go, the English spelling, by English I mean British English, the UK English to show this info down here, draw set color, it's looking for color. So that's just one difference. You can use the American spelling of color, but then you won't get assistance down in the info pane. Anyway, at this point it's looking for a color. Let's type in a built-in color. For that we start with C, and then we go underscore, and then we're allowed to use one of these built-in colors. So let's just type white. Now I'm going to middle click on that to open up the document to colors. These are all of the default colors GameMaker offers. Now, they're just default. We probably don't want to use them. We can make our own, and there are different ways to make your own colors. Down here, we've got make color out of HSV values and make color out of RGB values. So we can create colors ourselves, but that'll be a different lesson. So for this, I'm just going to use defaults. So that's C for color, underscore, and then one of the default colors, and I'm just going to choose white. Now we set our font. As I said, if you don't set it, the default is Arial and it'll be 12 point. If you ever need to set it back to the default, you can use negative one. That's how you set it back to the default. But in this case, I'm gonna choose one of our resources. I've prepared two different fonts. I've got Impact, which is 16 points, and there it is, it's just Impact font. I've also used Times New Roman, there it is, and it's 24. So let's use Font Impact. Now we can set the alignments, the horizontal and vertical alignments for our text. In horizontal alignment, you set the justification, either left, centered, or right. Left is the default. Let's do 
font alignment. That's the beginning of this. And I'm going to use center. So now our text will be centered. And the anchor point will be at the top still because we haven't set the vertical alignment. And for this, you can do the top, middle, or bottom. Top being the default. Top is fine. But for this, I'm going to font alignment to the middle. So now our anchor point for our font is dead center. It's the middle and the center of where our text will be drawn. So simply, we have to call this script. Well, let's name it something. I'm just going to call it sc underscore font. And let's call that. So there we go. We have no arguments. And I'm going to call that now if I run the game. As you can see, now, instead of being over here, the text is centered, it is white, it's impact, it's all good to go. And that's because I used all of these different settings. Now, you don't always need to use those settings. There are different ways to produce font without specifically stating every single draw set function. So let's not call that, and let's hop into our next function, which is draw text color. So it's the same as draw text, so we need some sort of string. Now let's learn something different about strings. Let's learn how to merge two different pieces of information. Let's set some sort of variable. Okay, let's set my HP to 100. Now this is going to continually set it to 100 because a draw event is like a step event. It's always happening. So it would be best to put this in the create event, but for this purpose, for this lesson, I'm going to put it here so you can see it. Now for our string, we have to put it inside quotation marks. Let's say my health is colon space. Hmm. Now we have to put in our HP. Well, to merge two different strings, we use the plus sign. Just like when you merge numbers, you're adding numbers together. We're going to add strings together. So we could say, okay, let's do my HP. Now that would seem logical. But the problem is HP is equaling a number, otherwise known as a real number. So this is real versus string. You'll see those two words used in the Game Maker manual. We would want to print out the string, considering this is asking for a string, and not a real number. Well, to convert real numbers into printable text, we use a function called string. And all that does is stringify any real number. So now HP equaling 100 will actually be the string 100. So it's as if I typed 100 as words instead of real number values inside GameMaker. Let's just undo all that. So now we have string HP. I left this little space here so that it's not butting up against the colon. So now draw text color gets four color options and an alpha option. Let's type in red for the first two, and let's do green for the next two, and for our alpha value, we'll just keep that at one. So there we go. What this does is it creates a blend, sort of a gradient effect through the colors. So it'll blend from red to green. So once again, let's see what that looks like. And here it is, it looks really ugly. We're back to Arial 12 point font and we're back to it being left top justified. But as you can see, it blended color one at the top down to color four at the bottom. That's our blend. And we've got red through green. And it actually says my health is colon 100. Once again, there are other ways to manipulate font without using just standard draw text. Another example is draw text ext which is either extend or extra, depending on how you want to think about it. It extends what draw text can do. So we'll do it at X and Y again. Now this time for text, our string, let's do something a little different. What if I wanted my string to be on two different lines? Okay, so if I say something like, this is line one, and I want to say, this is line two. But how do I do that? It's all written on one line. Well, for that, we use there the pound sign or hashtag sign or whatever you want to call it. We use that particular one, which is shift three. And now this symbol tells GameMaker that I want this to be on the next line. If 
course we don't need a space then after that period so it'll print this line read that symbol which will drop it down to a new line and then write line 2 now draw text extended has two different arguments at the end it has separation and width separation is your letting it's how far apart lines will be so let's just put that at zero right now and we'll see what happens and width is actually really interesting it's how wide in pixels your line of text can be before game maker will try to drop it down to another line it's like creating a font box once the font butts up against one side of the box it drops down to the next line and prints again how far does it drop down well that's dependent on this separation argument so for width let's just make it 800 I don't want to bump up against it that should be plenty of room in pixels considering my room is only 640 so let's just see what this one does so far okay so here it is we've got this is line 1 and this is line 2 they're written right on top of each other even though I use the hashtag pound symbol to denote a drop down in line my separation otherwise known as letting didn't drop down to another line because it was set at zero I'm not telling it to drop down any further than that so let's change that value let's say okay drop it down by hundred and fifty pixels something totally ridiculous where they're nowhere near each other and let's see what that looks like and just to make it look prettier let's bring back all our settings there we go we've got this is line one and this is line two 150 pixels apart when printed out so we can play around with these values all we want let's make it so that the width is like really small let's make it so this instead of 15 pixels so when writing our text if it ever let's maybe 25 I don't want to overwrite itself so we'll do 25 so if our text exceeds 25 pixels game maker will drop down to a new line and let's make it something a little more reasonable we'll do 25 as well it'll drop down to a new line and then continue with the text and drop down and drop down and drop down every time it butts up against 25 pixels from the anchor point so let's see what that looks like there we go so our anchor point was centered and every time it would go to 25 pixels it has to drop down and write the next word so this is line one this notice here this used to be where our pound sign was and it ignored it for this particular function just because it's doing the butting up against the maximum width and it drops it all down so that's how you can kind of manipulate your text you can center it you can create your own spacing between lines otherwise known as letting or separation and that's done with the draw text extended now that's cool but what if we want to manipulate it even further well you can do draw text x color now it's the same thing you still have these arguments but now we've also got color one through four and alpha like we did with draw text color so you can see already how that's going to be affected now we have something a little different we can transform our text so this is draw text x transformed so let's just do something really simple for string let's just say hello now we get to pick our separation again and our width this time will be a little more reasonable now we get to affect the x scale y scale and angle this is how stretched our text will be x y is on the x-axis that's kind of like the width and y which is kind of like the height and then we get to set the angle now normally these values are set to hundred percent which is 1.00 so one and we've got one for that and now the angle is typically zero zero faces to the right it's a flat plane like this so our text will look completely normal let's just take a look at it so we know what it looks like when it's normal there it is nothing special it says hello right where we told it to be and it's the same scale x and y and it's the right angle just zero nothing different now let's mess with it so let's make it really wide let's make it three times wider than it should be and I don't know let's make it half 50% what it should be in height so we're actually squishing it we're making it smaller and then let's change the angle well zero faces to the right and then we go around counterclockwise so let's make it go straight up and down so that's 90 so now it'll start here and print up toward the top of the screen there we go so we started here we wrote up toward the top of the screen because our angle is 90 and as you can see it's stretched out three times wider than it should be irrespective of the angle by the way so even though this is the Y scale it's affecting the X scale of the particular font so it still makes it stretch this way even though 
it's not being printed this way. And we only get half of the height of the font. So that's different ways you can manipulate the look and feel of the font. You can stretch it out. You can actually animate this too as long as these values are animated in some way. Like, let's say we establish in the create event some sort of number. Okay, so let's just call it number equals one. Okay. Then in our draw event, which is like a step event, it's continually happening, we can use it to animate stuff. So let's make our X scale, let's set our Y scale back to normal, and we'll set our angle back to normal. But instead, let's make this equal number. Then we need the number to change somehow. So continually, we'll take our original value, which is 1, and we'll make it plus equal, so every step it'll add this value to the original value, or current value, and we'll add to 25%. There we go. So it'll keep adding 0 0.25 to that 1. And there we go. We can make it animate. It's continually stretching, always adding 0 0.25 to the X scale ad infinitum. It just keeps going and going and going and until it looks really bad. But it's one example. You could do that to the alpha on one of these other ones and make it minus equal until it disappears into nothingness. You can always change any of these values with a value that is constantly changing, constantly like animating, which is the power of variables. But in this case, we'll just leave it back at one. The next function is draw text, extend, the transformed, the color, we're adding all this together. So not only is it going to be at a position with the string, just like draw text, we're adding extended values. So we're going to be taking the separation and the width. Then we're going to be taking transform values, which is going to be the X scale, Y scale, and angle. And then we're even going to take the color, which has a gradient between these four colors and the alpha. So it's just combining all of them. We can go less than that though, if we don't want to add all that color and we can do draw text transform. Now we've dropped the extended part, the extended part being separation and width, and now we're just going with the original draw text, x, y, string, and then we can affect the x scale, y scale, and angle. That's using transform. So you can see how each one of these little sections of the function has its own arguments. Draw text is the x, y, and the string. Color is the color one through four for the gradient and the alpha. The extended part is the separation and the width, and the transform part is the X scale and the Y scale and the angle. So you can keep combining all of these into this very last one. We have draw text, transform, color. So this doesn't use the separation and width, but it does use color with transform. So you can put all that stuff together depending on how you need it. Most of the time, you're probably just going to draw text simply at a certain position and then whatever you're writing, whether it be text or you're referencing some sort of variable inside your game that's, if it's a real number, you got to put it in a string function to turn that real number into a string. Or you can just write the word out yourself by putting it in quotation marks. And then you can affect it any way you wish. <laughs>